Look who it is. It is I before you. (laughs) All right. You got your button on too. JP. Oh, of course I do. We we now live in a world basically that is majority rule, so you might as, might as well just d- d- dive into it. You've been waving our flag since season one. We uh, everyone on the Orville loves you, so just 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 you're, you're you're among friends. Well, thank you very much, and I prepared this time. Usually, <laughs> I, I like to go off the cuff and just have a you know a, a nice little conversation, but you know there's there's time to deal with. Uh, some time travel here so i'm going to try to be prepared for you but it's so great to finally talk to you really really is yeah, um, Tom, our editor has, has been in touch with you for for years now and and he's uh he's you know we we love what you do you we, it's it's great to see people who, who just get the show well i owe you guys a, a huge thank you i mean just not only you know pushing myself as you know into being part of the show and uh, just conversations with Tom over the years and things that I learned from the writing of the show, but also from you guys, the way you guys do things. Uh, you guys have, have put me on a better path, the type of creator that I want to be, the types of things that I want to talk about and definitely don't want to talk about. And, and I owe that to all, of, to all of you over there. That's why we do it, JP. That's why well, we do it. Uh, as long as it's, you know, I don't care why you do it as long as you keep doing it. <laughs> what are you hoping to bring to fans of the Orville with New Horizons? And what are your hopes for this incredibly rich universe you've created within the series? You know, um, our, our, I mean, more than anything, uh, you know, season three is our, is our big swing. I think scope wise and story wise, we really have set out to do a little movie each week in a true sense and uh and to really reward fans who've been with us since the beginning and and um look i'm i'm open to doing more of these things if that's what's in the cards if the audience is there and they show up and and there's a demand there's an appetite for it absolutely willing to do more i i i i think this is probably the most fun i've had writing uh on any project in my career um well, it's, uh, I, I have no doubt after seeing the trailer, after seeing the response from the entire world and the entire world gets to enjoy this uh, together, which is absolutely amazing. Um, I think a lot of people are saying that there's no doubt that they're just going to have to keep making more, especially after the two episodes that I've seen. Um, I was blown away. I was absolutely blown away. I no longer have socks. Uh, <laughs> just <laughs> Like, yeah, they're off. They're gone. They're stuck in the window. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, but no, just going from it's just like any wonderful television series that we've loved for seasons and seasons. And then all of a sudden they come out with that movie. It's that type of jump. Yeah. And, and, it, and it's completely obvious. But talking about the, uh, how ambitious the season is, what was your goal when writing New Horizons, uh, which I doubt was even called that back then? Uh, and what was it like finally getting to return to the set after the new world pandemic guidelines that you guys have to follow? Yeah, it, well, it, it, the, the third season was really about, you know, we had figured out what we what we wanted to be by the end of season two. I mean, certainly the show was finding itself in season one and, and midway through season one, I think we sort of started to get a handle on it. And by, you know, season two, we were kind of more or less, uh, you know, formed season three is a show firing on all cylinders. I had I had watched uh, the third, well, whatever the, the most recent season of Black Mirror, mm-hmm. um, and it was the last one. They did those three episodes, yeah. and the third one was very light. It was the one with Miley Cyrus, and it was it was it was it was it was like a movie. It was like it was no Black Mirror, and it had a serious sci-fi premise, but it was a romp. And I thought that's strangely kind of what we do. And this canvas that they have to play with um, is is kind of what we need, and so that w- that kind of inspired the, the the move to jump to streaming and and to to not have to worry about running times and things like that, just to be able to tell our story. Um, but yeah, I forget the second half of your question, but that's that's. Uh... <laughs> Let's see if I can remember. Oh, what was it like getting back to set after that lockdown? And yep. knowing how big the season has to be, and now you have these new guidelines. It was really about it was really about um, crowds. That's where you could do anything. When when you had to get big crowds together for scenes, that was when it got really tricky. And you know, we we hired a, a consultant firm called Pan Defense, that's run by this guy, Dr. Larry Brilliant, who um, 
used to work for the WHO and was instrumental in the smallpox eradication. So that tells you how difficult it is. You to, have to do well if your last name's brilliant. Exactly. To keep your set safe. And they did such a good job for us that we had sort of, after a point, earned the right to go to Disney and say, hey, listen, we can we promise we can keep all these people safe. Can we do these? You know, so anything that you see that involves a crowd on the show is the last thing we shot that season. Mm -hmm. Just yeah, that, I assumed that would be the case. Just like you said, to keep everybody safe. Now, as a as as big of a sci fi fan as I know you are, uh, you you prove it with every episode of the Orville. What does it mean to you to actually be able to suit up and sit in that captain's chair and go on these adventures? Um, I mean, it's 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 a blast. It's a blast. It's great fun. It's there's there's no there's no more fun gig you could have. And and again, what I what I love most about the show is that. It, it is a true ensemble piece. And, you know, there, there are weeks where I just, I don't even have to put the suit on. Once you, it's also, once you put the suit on a few times, it's like, all right, I get this. You know, Jonathan Frakes was not wrong. <laughs> the suit is not the most comfortable thing in the world. I think we were doing better than most as far as comfort. Mm. <clears throat> you know, I also liked that I could, I had nine fantastic actors that I, I could write for. And each week I could, hand the show off to any of those characters and know that, you know, I could write a Borda story. I could write a Claire story. I could write a Gordon story. You know, it's uh, any character that I wanted to lean into. Um, I could do it. And, and that just makes a, it just makes for such a breadth of, of variety when you're telling a story and particularly on a show like this. Yeah. Well, the format, the variety is great because you never know what you're going to get with each, with each episode. It's like different types of sci-fi coming through and you, and you never know what you're going to get. And I know the audience just eats it up. Yeah, that's it's well, that's again, that's the genre. You can tell a comedy story. You can do and it could be an adventure. It can be a social allegory. It can be a romance. It can be you know anything you want. It's it's a it's a diverse genre. Well, and like I said, the two episodes I saw are absolutely amazing. But Mortality Paradox is now my new favorite episode of the Orville. I mean, it really hits the the, the thing that that made me fall in love with sci-fi back when I was five years old. It's that, that not only a great mystery, but it's having, you know, challenging you on what reality is. And, um, but also putting these characters, you know, they're the fish out of water at this point in that episode. Oh, gosh, three, man, that's, this is, I will say, that's, you, you ain't seen nothing. That's what I keep hearing. And I absolutely believe it. In that episode, I mean, it's a great callback to the multiphasic, uh planet of people and uh but one thing is uh getting reintroduced to those people just completely destroys my theory that the multiphasic people were the original biological kalon <laughs> so i guess my question is how dare you do that to me <laughs> no what was the thought process coming up with that idea for the episode which was written by cherry uh, and bringing back our old friends from that planet because everyone's been wanting to know what's been going on with them yeah, I mean, it, it, look, that, that, that episode was, at the end of the day, about, yeah, it's about, it's about what your perception of reality is. It, it was a, it's about, uh, I, you know, you, you read a lot in, in the press about these, you know, these billionaires that go after immortality. How do, we, how do I achieve immortality? And it's mm. such a complex thing because it, it, the, the common sense or the common wisdom used to be that, you know, death is a, as Borda says, death is a, an important uh, rite of passage. Mm -hmm. And it's a, it's a, we're in a changing world where, you know, we're on the cusp of these uh, longevity technologies that are, you know, who knows what that's going to do? Who knows? There may be a point in the future where you can essentially choose when you want to kick off. Um, after you build your own rocket. After you build your own rocket. <laughs> so, so it's you know this this idea of of what is it what is it what is what is immortality and and what does it mean does it just become boring does it just become a, a drag after a certain point is, or is it just is there never enough to stop learning that it's just always entertaining so it, it it's that that to me has just always been a fascinating premise and and it's um you know obviously the way we tell the story is is a uh, is a very rompish uh, yeah quite a bit. Well, it looks like that is my time today, but I would someday we'll talk for hours just about this one episode, hopefully. I, I, will, I will be back on your show. Don't worry. 
<laughs> All right. Appreciate it. Well, it was great talking to you and I look forward. I hope everyone looks forward to New Horizons. <laughs>